Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today, we are going to discuss about the latest report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. This topic is very important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS Mains Paper 3. So let's begin with the various topics that we are going to cover under this. These are the many topics that we are going to cover from the highlights to its impacts on India and what is the what are the challenges and the way forward that will be discussed in the conclusion segment okay and in the last of the segment of course you will get a mains based answer writing question so ipcc's report has come out and it paints another grim picture it has been the first ever the report has been the first ever now as a part of the sixth assessment which provides a more granular data by granular data i mean that it provides a more localized data supposedly which city is vulnerable to how much of heat wave which city is much more vulnerable for floods all this will be provided another very significant thing about the report is it also gives us an insight about the impacts on uh, health of the climate change so if we talk about ipcc's report we will discuss all about that but ipcc let's know about ipcc intergovernmental panel on climate change is an international body by the name you might get it it's an international body on climate change and it was established in the year 1988 by two important bodies world meteorological organization and united nations environment program so these two bodies they come up they came up with an idea of having a body which might give insight for the policy making on the overall structure of the climate change what are the scientific basis of climate change what are the impacts of it how can we do something to improve it so this came out and for the first time ever a comprehensive report of uh, the climate change came up in the year 1990 so this body brings a very special report which is known as the assessment report up to now six assessments have been done and we are in our current assessment, sixth assessment, of which the first part of the report came in August of 2021. Now, this, the part of the report that we are going to discuss today is the second part that came out right now. And if we talk about the third part of the report, that will come out in April this year itself. So, it will put a more, a more a complete picture when we have all the three parts. And how does it work? It works through working groups. Working groups are board of uh, scientists, are a group of scientists who get information from every piece possible, every place possible about the, the study of the climate, what is actually going on with the climate, how can we do to improve things. So it brings out data basically. Okay. So remember certain things. Okay. So the resolution was 43 by 53 just for facts of 6 December 1988. It provided for an IPCC, which have to, which has to prepare a comprehensive review report with keeping in mind the state of knowledge of the science of climate change, what are the social and economic impacts and the potential response strategies, what can we do to remedy any kind of detriment that we have created. Now, representative of IPCC member governments, they meet once or twice a year, depending on the need of the hour, and they have they elect a bureau of scientists okay duration of an assessment cycle is also determined along with that and assessment report generally comes out every six to seven years we can say seven years okay moving on if we talk about the ipcc secretariat and the technical support units of the working groups as i told you these are the group of scientists and task force these are the basic structure of these are a part of the basic structure of ipcc so as you can see, India has welcomed the release of working group, working group second, okay, contribution to the sixth assessment report about climate change in IPCC. So if we talk about the second working group, this basically talks about the impacts and vulnerabilities and adaptation with respect to climate change. Remember that this group of scientists, the working group two, adaptation, vulnerability and impacts of climate change, okay. Moving on, if we talk about working group 2, it has actually contributed to the three IPCC special reports, namely global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius, climate change and land 
and the ocean and cryosphere in a changing climate which working group 2 was the lead the second working group of the scientists okay let's move forward and talk about the second uh, if we talk about the importance of the report that we are going to discuss is it's named as climate change 2022 impacts adaptation and vulnerability okay and why is this report so important why do we even need to study this report because this report has been the basis of many policy making many policy makers now keep one thing in mind that this report does not come out with dictates or like you have this government has to do that that government has to do that it's nothing of that sort but it will provide you so compelling evidences about climate change that you are bound to make a policy that's what the governments do paris agreement was negotiated negotiated on the basis of the fifth assessment report so of course we have to take that into consideration also the group of scientists that are selected the authors that are selected those who are selected they go through a very rigorous process and their job is to do that whatever they are not generalists they are specialists that is why we should take their reports very seriously so as i told you that in 1990 the first report came after that many thousand pages of reports did come which was taken very seriously with respect to getting data and the new report will reaffirm that the science whatever reports will come they will talk about the actual science that is behind getting the evidence and large scale reduction in carbon dioxide has been reiterated time and again by the reports whatever reports have come so as i told you these are the basis of many important policy making kyoto protocol paris agreement okay so we have to take this report very seriously what is what are the highlights of the reports now if i am saying that they are uh, this report is also reiterating what has been reiterated what has been said in the past that does not mean that this report is useless this is going to harp on the similar highlights that were in the last part no of course whenever we reiterate something climate change is very real it cannot be denied but we will of course through every report come to know what is the scope how expanded the picture becomes how expansive the picture has become when each and every report comes but for the first time ever this report has made an assessment of regional and sectoral impacts that means it talks about ahmedabad being more prone to heat waves mumbai being more prone to floods so this is granular data that it is providing and also it has included the risks to and vulnerabilities of mega cities around the world so that means what is the best thing that we can take it uh, take from here is that now i have a data with respect to cities then i can make policies according to that i can make arrangements with respect to early warning system with respect to policies one size fits all does not to have to be there if i have the localized data also it for the first time again first time regional and sectoral impacts and for the first time looked at the health impacts of the climate change and it has said that there will be an increase in the vector borne disease and water borne disease vector borne disease means the diseases which are carried by blood sucking anthropods to humans from animals like that for example ticks mosquitoes okay so vector borne disease will increase and disease such as malaria and dengue will also increase specifically in subtropical regions of asia and also deaths related to circulatory respiratory diabetes infectious disease also are about to increase in the next 20 years if we do not take proper steps also it says that there will be an increasing frequency of extreme weather events like heat waves of which in india ahmedabad will be the most affected flooding for mumbai and drought and also air pollution is exaggerating to undernutrition it is causing undernutrition and also allergic diseases and even mental disorders mental fogging and impacts of climate change now are far greater they are more frequent and also more profound and it would surprise you to know that already if we talk about in india or not in india around the globe 3.5 billion people 3.5 billion people are prone to vulnerabilities with respect to climate change that is more than 45% so 45% people are already living in areas which are vulnerable and it is very haunting for india because india with respect to coastal changes coastal changes if we talk about coastal challenges with respect to flooding and right now by the mid of the century if i am talking about 
35 million people will be impacted million and 40 to 45 it will increase by the end of the century so this is not a very good thing for india now if we talk about india first of all hot extreme including heat waves they have inter intensified in the city because of concretization which is not managed in nature which leads to heat island effect if i cut all the trees across the infrastructural areas and i do not have even one plant to sequester carbon to provide moisture of course it will increase heat waves because so much concretization has happened that we do not have proper moisture soaking vegetation then aggravated air pollution events and limited functioning of key infrastructure observed impacts are concentrated amongst the economically and socially marginalized urban residents also urbanization is increasing infrastructure including transportation water sanitation energy system have been compromised of course when one thing is compromised everything is related to in a chain and those will be also compromised heat and humidity will create conditions beyond human tolerance if emissions are not rap rapidly eliminated if i talk about emissions right now we are pursuing 2 degrees celsius we have to keep the carbon emissions the temperature increase below 2 degrees celsius if we compare it to the pre industrial levels and the final goal is 2 degrees celsius but now we are we are wanting to make it at least 1.5 degrees celsius if 1.5 degrees celsius threshold is breached then some damages will be there which are irreversible in nature and a country like india which has such a huge coastline of course will also suffer urban india is at a greater risk than other areas with a projected population of 877 million by 2050 urbanization is also increasing urbanization is increasing in such a manner right now supposedly only 35% of the population is urbanized but what about the next 20 30 years there are many pull and push factors which are causing more urbanization much more urbanization which is not managed in nature managed in nature means it people are moving from villages to urban areas in search of employment and then they resort to such a means of living which are not healthy in nature with respect to climate they are living in slums they are using very unsustainable sources of sanitation everything is also being taken into account at present wet bulb temperature is in india rarely exceed 31 degrees celsius that is fine wet bulb temperature means having a data with respect to combined of combination of heat and humidity so right now it is 31 degrees celsius if it increases 31 degrees celsius then it will be very intolerant to live here in this country mumbai is at a high risk of severe flooding and sea level rise please note this down this can be asked in your question uh, in your prelims examination ahmedabad is a serious urban heat island as i told you concretization is not it it is not being arranged by proper sequestering of carbon proper heat absorbing materials such as trees and vegetation several cities which also includes chennai bhubaneswar patna and lucknow they are approaching dangerous level of heat and humidity that means wet bulb temperatures might increase even for a fit person if the wet bulb in breaches threshold of 35 degree right now it's between 25 to 30 degrees but if it goes beyond 31 there and also 35 then it will be very impossible for a healthy person to live in that area for beyond 6 hours heat dome effect i know if you remember what is heat dome effect so challenges first of all there are gaps in adaptation some places have adapted very well for the climate change they have the technologies whereas others do not have that is because there are lack of funds not proper investment from private sector government is doing its bit but it's not enough because there is a lack of political commitment as well political commitment should be sustainable in nature it should go for a long period of time and just not resort to something that is just like doing it for the sake of doing it then growing urbanization which i told you if it's not managed properly it will wreak havoc if we talk about the cost of destruction cost of gdp that we have to pay if mumbai's flooding is taken into account 162 billion dollars can be lost when we talk about india's gdp for the next century so you have to understand that and at the current cost we are already losing 24 million dollars 
and if it breaches the threshold of 1.5 degree celsius it could it could wreak havoc for us like if we talk about the current levels it, it could be 36 million dollars so way forward first of all not only formulate policies but also implement them to the core implementation whenever there is lacking adaptation won't be possible for that adaptation we should have proper technology transfers from developed to developing countries and for funding we have private investors we have to make it very lucrative by giving them tax breaks tax incentives for them to invest into renewable energy which is sustainable in nature and they have we have to look for alternatives right now the world is very volatile in nature we have to be very careful with respect to making our economy sustainable as we see first we had trade war between china and usa then we had the pandemic now we have the war so india has to become dependent when it independent when it comes to any sort of technology specifically if we talk about climate change now let's move on to the practice question discuss how the latest report of ipcc reiterates the previous concerns but by providing granular information it might be useful for countries like india in 250 words okay so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching